This is going to be a relatively quick video that basically just outlines the different types of radiation you guys will be responsible for knowing this year. We'll begin the process with a quick overview of what's going to happen. Uh, first of all, we'll have a quick review of why atoms actually give off radiation, uh, the balance of forces that are acting inside the nucleus. And then we'll dive right into the real meat of the process here, uh, which is the different types of radiation. Uh, we'll identify what the particle is for each, what they're made of. Uh, we'll identify the symbol we use to represent these different types of radiation. And we'll briefly start talking a little bit about what this radiation actually fixes, how it repairs an unstable nucleus. Before we dive into the real heart of the process here, let's do a quick review. And the question we really want to make sure you guys are comfortable with is why do atoms actually give off radiation? If you recall from previous videos, the stability of a nucleus is determined by a balance of forces uh, between the repulsion force pushing apart and the strong nuclear force pushing in. Uh, we can see that force depicted over here in this diagram. We can see that the positive charges, let me choose a different color here, the positive charges of our protons repel against one another. That gets that electrostatic repulsion we've represented with F sub R. And then all particles in the nucleus, regardless whether they're protons or neutrons, have a smaller uh, attractive force acting between them, which we call the nuclear strong force, or F sub S. When these forces are in balance, the atom is stable. When they're not, the atom is unstable and gives off radiation. So that stability then is determined not just by the forces, but by the ratio of protons to neutrons. When you have the right number of protons to neutrons, we get the right balance of force. Anything that's not that ideal ratio is going to result in the release of radiation to change the number of neutrons and protons, so we get back closer to that ideal ratio and those balance forces. So let's dive into our different types of radiation then. Uh, for each one of these, you want to list pretty much what I have here on the screen, what it's made of, uh, in this case, two protons and two, two neutrons, what the symbol we use to represent it is, and how it fixes the nucleus. We'll talk more about the fixing part later in the chapter, but we'll at least introduce the idea here. So we'll start with our first, uh, that is alpha radiation. Uh, alpha radiation is made up of two protons and two neutrons that are ejected from the nucleus. Again, we can see that depicted over here. We see our two protons and our two neutrons. Uh, the symbol we use for represent these are just regular old nuclear symbols. Uh, the appropriate symbol, the better one, is this guy right here. This is the Greek letter alpha for an alpha particle. Two, pro two protons gives it an atomic number of two. Two neutrons means two protons plus two neutrons gives us an atomic mass of four. You will see this symbol show up like this, and I'll talk about this with a couple of our radiation types. Uh, a alpha particle is very similar to a helium nucleus, and for those of us who don't want to take the time to find the alpha symbol in our keyboard, uh, you can just type in HE. This is the better one. Sometimes this is the more commonly written one, especially in typed print. Last but not least, uh, what does it fix? Uh, sometimes we have atoms that are simply too large and it's hard to get the entire atom to have a balance of strong force and repulsion force. Uh, as a result, the, uh, the remedy for this is for the atom to exist or ex to get rid of two protons and two neutrons. doesn't change the ratio all that much, but it makes the nucleus smaller. Our next type of radiation that we'll be talking about here is beta radiation. Uh, beta radiation is a little strange. Uh, it's an electron, basically ejected from the nucleus, and that's strange because the nucleus doesn't have electrons. We'll talk about how that works in a couple seconds. Really quickly, the symbol again for a beta particle, this is the better one. We use the Greek letter beta. Uh, sometimes, again, when you don't feel like finding that beta character on your computer, we use the letter E here to represent because a beta particle is basically an electron. Uh, it has an atomic number of negative one because it's basically acting as the opposite of a proton. So instead of being one for one proton, we use negative one for a beta. Uh, a beta particle comes from a neutron, actually. Uh, that neutron turns into a proton and emits the beta particle as a result of that process. And we'll talk more about how that works a little later on down the road. Uh, and that pretty much talks about how it fixes things as well. Uh, a beta particle turns a neutron into a proton, and as a result of that, it changes the proton to neutron ratio. Uh, so any scenario where we have too many neutrons, a beta particle potentially could potentially fix that. Next we'll talk about another type of radiation a little different than the previous two. This is gamma radiation. Uh, gamma radiation, the most important thing to note about it is that it is electromagnetic radiation. It is not a particle, it is a wave of energy. Uh, electromagnetic radiation, gamma radiation in particular, is the highest frequency on the EM spectrum. It's a very dangerous form of radiation. 
Uh, the symbol we use to represent a gamma particle is again the Greek letter gamma, uh, which is this little y-like character. And because it's energy and not a particle, it has a mass of zero and an atomic number of zero. Uh, a gamma particle is given off in, usually in concert with other types of radiation. Uh, it doesn't affect the proton to neutron ratio, but when other types of radiation do happen and you have a reshuffling of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, uh, any excess energy left over from that process can be released as gamma radiation. Uh, moving on to some of our more exotic types of radiation, the first three we just covered there are much more common. This is a little less common. Uh, we'll talk about positron radiation. Uh, positron radiation is very similar to a beta particle, but it has the opposite charges. Uh, in fact, and while this isn't super important for us, I'll mention it anyway, uh, a positron is actually a form of antimatter. It's the antiparticle uh, to a beta particle. Uh, the symbol for a positron, uh, again, is not too surprising. It's exactly the same as a beta symbol, but instead of the negative one here, we have a plus one. Uh, and likewise, also, we tend to put a little plus up here a lot of times just to make sure it's clear we're talking about positron and not beta. And just like we can use the E for uh, beta, we can use the E for positron as well. Notice the mechanism over here is pretty much the same, but in this case, the opposite's happening. A proton is now turning into a neutron and giving off a positron in the process. Uh, and as I said, just like everything else, it has the opposite effect in terms of what it fixes that a beta particle does. It turns a proton into a neutron and ultimately changes that proton to neutron ratio, it just changes it in the other direction. Last but not least, uh, we'll talk about neutron radiation. Uh, this is one of the simplest ones that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, in neutron radiation, you basically have a neutron ejected from the nucleus. No fancy mechanics, it just gets spit out. The symbol for that that we use here uh, is, again, a nuclear symbol. We use N for the neutron. It has no protons in it, so its atomic number is zero. And we have one for the mass, because it's made of one neutron. Uh, this does what you would expect it to do in terms of fixing things. It reduces the number of neutrons in the nucleus. Uh, this type of radiation is all often the result of a nuclear collision. When one nucleus collides with another, a lot of times the neutrons can be ejected this way. Uh, when we talk about a, a, an atom bomb, not a, a fusion bomb, but an atom bomb, when we talk about a nuclear power plant, this is the way in which they generate energy. Collisions from neutrons cause other neutrons to be ejected, and energy is released in the process. So that pretty much sums it up. Uh, not a whole lot going on in this particular video. Uh, what you need to be able to do, first of all, is to know why atoms give off radiation. That was talked in a lot more detail in previous videos, reviewed here very quickly. And then obviously today the main idea was the radiation types themselves. You should be able to describe each type of radiation, what it's made of basically. You should be able to identify them via the nuclear symbol. Uh, and you should be able to know how they generally fix an unstable atom. What do they alter inside of the nucleus to bring that atom closer to being a stable nucleus again. Uh, as always, if you have any questions on what we've seen, make sure to bring those up in class. Uh, we'll definitely be looking at some problems and some review once you guys get back into the room.